वेलकम टू फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन क्लास टेन साइंस चैप्टर टेन लाइट रिफ्लेक्शन एंड रिफ्रैक्शन बिफोर स्टार्टिंग विद द चैप्टर आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन वी सी अ वेराइटी ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट्स अराउंड अस हाउ एवर वेन वी आर इन अ डार्क रूम देन वी आर अनेबल टू सी एनीथिंग बट ऑन लाइटिंग ऑफ द रूम ऑन स्विचिंग ऑन द लाइट वी आर एबल टू सी वेरियस ऑब्जेक्ट सो वॉट मेक्स थिंग्स विजिबल The answer to this question is the name of the chapter that is light so light is responsible for making the things visible to us now how does this happen let's find out in this chapter so an object reflects the light that falls on it when this reflected light is received by our eyes we are able to see the different objects so in this chapter we shall study two phenomenon of light the reflection of light and refraction of light and basics of both these phenomenon is that light travels in a straight line so rectilinear propagation of light is the basis for both reflection as well as refraction of light so i have divided this chapter into six parts in this first lecture we shall discuss reflection of light reflection by plane mirror and reflection by spherical mirrors introduction of reflection by spherical mirrors In the second lecture we shall discuss image formation by spherical mirrors in the form of ray diagrams so i will cover the ray diagrams from basics to advanced in the third lecture we shall discuss mirror formula and magnification in fourth lecture we shall discuss refraction of light in fifth lecture we shall continue with refraction and discuss refraction of light by spherical lenses in the form of ray diagrams finally in the sixth lecture we shall discuss lens formula magnification and power of lens so sit back and enjoy now let's start with the first topic that is reflection of light so the bouncing back of light rays is called reflection now before learning more about reflection let's understand the terminology associated with it so first incident ray this is the incoming right ray so in this figure ao is the incident ray second point of incidence so the point where the incident ray touches the mirror is called point of incidence so in this case if we are taking the mirror to be m1 m2 then the point o is the where the ray ao is touching the mirror therefore o is the point of incidence third reflected ray this is the ray that is sent back so incident ray is incoming and reflected ray is the ray which is being sent back in this case bo is the reflected ray fourth normal so a perpendicular drawn on the mirror at the point of incidence is called normal so as you can see that no is perpendicular to the mirror that's why no is normal in this case fifth angle of incidence so the angle between incident ray and the normal is called angle of incidence so here angle aon is the angle of incidence and angle of incidence is denoted by small i sixth angle of reflection this is the angle between the reflected ray and the normal so in this case the small r is the angle of reflection and it is depicted by small r and uh, its value is nop now after learning about all the terms associated with reflection of light let's understand the laws of reflection so the first law is that angle i is equal to angle r that is angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection second the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane these laws are applicable for all mirrors including spherical mirrors so these laws are not just applicable for plane mirrors but they are also applicable for all kinds of mirrors such as spherical mirrors now let's discuss the different types of mirrors which we will study in this chapter first plane mirror this is the mirror with flat reflecting surface second spherical mirror these are the mirrors with curved reflected surface so first let's discuss plane mirror now let's discuss the characteristics of image formed by plane mirror 
So the image is virtual and it cannot be obtained on a screen. Second, the image is erect. This means the image is upright. It is not inverted. Third, the size of image is equal to the size of the object. So the image is same in shape and size as the object. Fourth, the image is laterally inverted. So this is a very interesting phenomenon. So if we take an object, as you, you can see in this diagram, then the image formed will be laterally inverted. This means that the right and the left sides of the image are interchanged. And fifth, the image formed is as far behind the mirror as the object is in front of it. So this means that the distance between the object and the mirror is same as the distance between the image and the mirror. So this means that distance AO is equal to distance BO. So let's revise the characteristics of image formed by plane mirror. So the image is virtual, erect. So the size of image is same as the size of object. Image is laterally inverted. And finally, the distance of the image from the, from the mirror is same as the distance from, of the object from the mirror. Now, after learning all about plane mirror, let's discuss spherical mirrors. So these are the mirrors with curved reflecting surface. And they are of two types convex mirrors and concave mirrors. So convex mirrors are those in which the reflecting surface is curved outwards. So as you can see that this side of the spoon is a convex mirror. So you can see that it is bulging outwards. So you can see that it is curved outwards. Thus this side is a convex mirror. And second is concave mirror. So in concave mirror the reflecting surface is curved inwards. So as the word concave ca can be said as cave and cave means depression. So here you can see that in concave mirror the, uh, there is a depression. So this means that the reflecting surface is curved inwards. So to learn this you can uh, learn it as concave, cave which means inwards, curved inwards and a convex bulging outwards. Now let's discuss the various terms associated with spherical mirrors. So first, pole. This is the center of the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror. So as you can see in this diagram that the center of the reflecting surface is known as pole and it is denoted, uh, denoted by capital P. Second, center of curvature. The reflecting surface of a spherical mirror is a part of a sphere. So basically, if you join both the ends of the reflecting surface, then you will get a sphere. And the center of this sphere is known as the center of curvature. So as you can see in this diagram, that on completing this reflecting surface, we got a sphere. And the center of the sphere is re represented by capital C, which is nothing but the center of curvature. Third, radius of curvature. So now the radius of this sphere is known as radius of curvature. And radius of curvature is nothing but the distance between the center of curvature and the pole. Fourth, principal axis. So a straight line passing through the pole and the center of curvature is called principal axis. So here you can see in this diagram that if we draw a straight line passing through the pole, point P and point C, then this line is known as principal axis. Fifth, focus denoted by capital F. So the point at which the light rays appear, uh, parallel to the principal axis meet or appear to meet after reflection from mirror is called focus. Now let's understand focus by drawing a diagram. So to understand the meaning of focus we have a diagram. So here we are having a mirror, a concave mirror and here this is a principal axis passing through the center of curvature and the pole. And now, these both are light sources. So from these both light sources, I am drawing the incident rays and the reflected rays. So from this light source, a ray will go. And from this light source, a ray will go. And then after touching the mirror, they will get reflected. So here we are getting reflected. Now the point where both these reflected rays are meeting, that point is known as focus. 
So this point is our focus. So basically, if we take the parallel light rays parallel to the principal axis, then when they are reflected, then the point at which they are meeting, that is known as the focus. And at this point, all the reflected rays will meet. So if we draw another line parallel to the axis and when it will get reflected, and this line will also, this ray will also pass to the focus. So if we draw infinite number of rays parallel to the principal axis, then all of them will pass to the focus. And the distance between this focus and the pole is known as focal length, which is denoted by small f. So now let's revise all these terms once again. So basically, the center of the reflecting surface of the mirror is known as pole. So this point is pole. And if we complete this reflecting surface, then this reflecting surface will be a part of a sphere. And here you can see the rest of the sphere. And the center of the sphere is known as center of curvature, denoted by a capital C. Now, the radius of the sphere is known as radius of curvature, denoted by capital R. So, this distance, that is CP, will be the distance of radius of curvature, denoted by capital R. Now, this straight line passing through the pole and this center of curvature is known as principal axis. And the point at which all the reflected rays which are parallel to the principal axis will meet is known as focus. This point is focus. And the distance between the focus and the pole is known as focal length denoted by cap small f. And the relation between focal length and, capital, uh, and radius of curvature is that radius of curvature is equal to twice focal length. And this diameter of this mirror, this distance, this diameter is known as aperture. So this will be the aperture. So this was all about this lecture. In the next lecture, we shall discuss more about spherical mirrors and we shall discuss the image formation by spherical mirrors. Thank you.